Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about how you can protest your property taxes in Texas and the important dates to remember. You know, guys, property taxes are one of the biggest expenses that homeowners have to deal with. However, sometimes you might feel that property taxes assessment is too high and you want to protest it. So what can it be done? How can we do this? I've got a great individual that we're going to talk to right here, and he's going to explain what can be done and how you guys can file your property taxes. So I'm going to bring on Maxim right here. Hi, Hi. Hi how everyone. are you? Thanks well, for good. joining. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, you are the guy for protesting for property taxes. So Maxim, kind of explain it to me. How long have you been doing this? Yeah. So. Actually, we started out back in 2019. We put together a website uh, as an informational source um, for, you know, Williamson uh, County, where anybody, you know, who owns property uh, can go on our website and look at the map uh, and see who is protesting of their neighbors, how much they're saving and stuff like that. And that's all based on, you know, the public data that's available from the appraisal districts, kind of aggregated together with the tax rates, uh, you know, calculated, um, you know, we calculate the tax savings and we just kind of make it in a easy, di easily di digestible format. It's very visual. You can go and see who exactly is protesting in your neighborhood, how much they save, just as a sort of an inspiration for, um, you know, for doing it and how common it is and, you know, how much money, you know, others are saving and, you know, potentially if you're not protesting, how much money you're leaving uh, behind. And also we have, um, you know, still to this day, by the way, that, that map is, is still there. We have historic records dating back to 2019. Uh, and so you can flip through the different layers on the map and see how, you know, the, the savings have changed over the years. And also you can request a neighborhood report specifically for your neighborhood where you'll see, you know, how many properties there are, how many protests have been filed, what's the success rate, average savings, um, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, top 10 protests uh, in your neighborhood. So you can see some people are saving thousands of dollars uh, mm -hmm. when they protest their taxes. So, yeah, it's, it's a great thing to do. It's your legal right uh, to do it in, in the state of Texas. And uh, it's a good opportunity to you know, to save some, some money on property taxes. I know. Why not? Because last year was crazy. I remember for all the properties that were, it was sky high. This year, this year also, it's a little bit high, but I've gotten a lot of clients reaching out, especially residential, but also my investors that have been calling me and saying, hey, what happened here? Why is it so high in the state uh, of Texas? What's going on? What can it be done? So, I guess give us a little bit of explanation on the important dates, what was right, and then how step by step, what can they be doing to get this started? Sure, yeah. So uh, the most important deadline uh, to keep in mind is May 15th. That's a state mandated deadline uh, for filing the protest. Um, some appraisal districts in some counties send appraisal notices later, uh, you know, uh, beyond uh, April, and then you know, if you don't receive your uh, notice by uh, April 15th, you actually have 30 days from the date of notice to file it. So if, let's say it comes on, you know, uh, April the 20th, then you have till May 20th to file uh, the protest. So it's May 15th or 30 days from the date of notice, whichever is later uh, is, is the deadline. And by now, again, most of the counties uh, should have sent out their, their notices. Williamson sent them out about three weeks ago uh, around April 1st. Travis has been sending mailing them out uh, beginning and uh, beginning of last week. So if you haven't received yours, you should it should be coming uh, soon uh, if it hasn't if it hasn't come yet. And of course, you can check out the appraisal district websites. You know, look your property up by property address, and you should see um, you know your your 2023 appraisal uh, value. Awesome. And then now for investments, I have a lot of investors ask, hey, can that can they reduce their prices too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, based on the state uh, state law, you can protest any kind of property uh, uh, that you have that's on the appraisal district that includes, you know, any kind of residential, whether it's your primary, second home, if it's Airbnb, whether it's your investment with long term tenants, there's no restrictions, you can file your protest and uh, get tax savings. And of course, you can also do it for land, commercial, mobile homes, business personal property you can protest you know any property that's on the appraisal district role um 
there's no restrictions. Awesome. And what have you seen the amount of savings that has been done that you have helped people out? So, the, yeah, so this year, you know, we're still just, uh, um, you know, filing the protests uh, and the hearings typically take place in the in the summer months. Mm -hmm. And the amount of savings really varies um, by, you know, there, there's a lot of factors, right? You know, how much the property is, is worth, um, you know, what is the, the tax rate? What's the uh, outcome of the protest, right? Uh, you know, on, on average, you know, last year, for example, we were able to save uh, our clients about $800 in property taxes. And of course, you know, we, we've excluded the homestead exemption cap properties because, you know, the home is, say, worth. You know, market value is a million dollars and the assessed value is six or seven hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's not realistic to, you know, uh, reduce the property value by that much. So when we're doing our calculations for the tax savings, we excluded, you know, all homestead exemption cap properties. So, you know, basically it's investment properties, you know, people who bought in 2021 or who don't have homestead exemption for you know whatever reason. Um, you know, their savings was about eight hundred dollars. And it, again, it varies by county like Williamson County. Uh, we were averaging about $700 uh, in savings. Travis is a little bit higher at 1000 and that just depends on, again, mm -hmm. value of the property. The two counties that I just said, they have different appraisal techniques. And so, you know, because of that, that can affect um, the amount of savings that we can achieve. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, <clears throat> the other question that I get is, they don't know what to do. They don't even know how to get started, right? So mm -hmm. what would you suggest on that end? Yeah, so uh, a lot of uh, counties have online portals uh, where uh, you can go online and uh, you know create an account. Uh, sometimes they include your like password on the appraisal notice. Sometimes it's just you know you type in your address and your email and you create an account and you go online and and file uh, a protest on online directly with them. Now it's very important that you choose. You know, uh, there's a lot of options that are presented to homeowners for the different reasons why uh, you want to protest. And the two that are most common are, you know, your market value uh, is, uh, you know, not where it should be. And your property value is unequal to other properties in the neighborhood. And so, you know, if nothing else, those are the two most important choices that you have to choose. Because if you choose one but not the other, sometimes it will affect the outcome. So always make sure you choose both. But of course, read through all. Typically, there's maybe a dozen different options, including like, you know, property shouldn't be taxed in this district and, you know, a few other uh, choices. So make sure you read through them and, um, you know, choose the ones that, that apply. And guys, if you don't want to do it alone, obviously it's a lot easier to just contact somebody that has done it for all these many years, is very professional, stress-free. And if they do reach out to you, how do they get started and how easy is it and what are your price points? Yeah, so our enrollment is super easy. You just go on our website, taxforestmap.com, and uh, you know we have a big search box where you can type in your address um, and we'll show it in the drop down based on our records. You click on that, it takes you to the enrollment flow. If you have multiple properties, you can add all the properties together and complete all the entire enrollment at once. And it's super basic. You just provide us some basic info like your name, your email, phone number, you know, mailing address, et cetera. Then you review our service agreement. Um, you know, we generate the, the documents for you right then and there on our website. You e-sign them, you know, similar to DocuSign or one of the other solutions, and you're done. You know, most most of our clients who are signing up can finish it in about three minutes. Now, mm -hmm. of course, if you want to be very thorough and read through, you know, all the documentation that, that we have in a service agreement, it will take longer, but you know, again, um, if you want to you know, just kind of blaze through it, it's really just a few minutes. We don't require you to create an account on our website. So it's super, super simple. And then once you sign up with us, you'll get an email confirmation uh, and we handle uh, the entire process. So you don't have to show up for the hearing. You don't have to do any research. We do all of that uh, for you. Uh, and when it comes to pricing, we actually offer one of the lowest uh, fees uh, compared to other companies, we only work on a contingency basis of 33% of the tax savings. There's no upfront costs of any kind. And if we don't save you anything for you know, a given property, there's no charges. You know, there's no minimum fees or anything else like that. So it's pretty much risk free. Um, you know, there's, there's no downsides. No, there's only upside, right? Because yeah. by law, they cannot increase your value at, because you protest. Mm -hmm. So there's only upside, which is you can, you can get some tax savings. 
No, that's true. I, I absolutely agree because a lot of women did not do that last year or even this year. If you're thinking, go ahead and just try it out and see how much you guys can save um, versus you're getting at the end and you're paying so many on your property taxes, right? Um, right. Any other pointers you want to give out to, you know, buyers or investors or anything? Yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah, super, super important uh, to protest again. It's your legal right. Uh, there's no uh, there's no downsides to to doing it. You know, if you you know don't want to uh, spend the time uh, doing it yourself, you know, hire somebody else who can do it for you. Uh, and of course, you know, our company, again, works only on a contingency basis. So we're not going to charge you anything if we're not successful for whatever reason. Uh, and yeah, the deadline super important, May 15th or 30 days from the date of notice. If you miss that deadline, you know, there's not uh, there's not a lot that can be done. I mean, sometimes there can be extenuating circumstances where you can file a late protest, but that's very uncommon. And you'd have to have a very good reason why you couldn't, you know, file the protest on that 45 or 30 day window. Yeah. Well, thank you. And then, guys, if you have any comments or any questions, just write them down below on the comment section. We'll get those answered for you. But again, thanks. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, got some value out of this video. Until next time. Thanks. Yep. Thank you.